After each outer layer is removed, we increasingly see Harry's inner self. The young prince still kept thinking he was special. The court's ruling on Harry's lawsuit with the Executive Committee for the Protection of Royalty and Public Figures revealed many interesting details to us. He lost again. His outrageous demands were not met. And he announced that he would appeal. Looks like the story won't stop here. And welcome back to the Royal News 365 channel, my thirsty friends. I probably don't need to summarize the court statement on the decision in Harry's case. I believe you all remember. And just like at the hearing where his lawyers defended him on the visa issue, many of Harry's lies were exposed again. In addition to those lies, we also see a rather arrogant attitude from Harry. Do you know that Harry demanded to know who was responsible for downgrading his police protection? This is crazy! I wonder what is he going to do with the name? Add it to the ever-growing shit list? You and your wife are compiling? Enemies of the state of Sussex going to ruin them? Demand a public apology and lifelong loyalty thereafter or whatever he feels is okay? They want to hunt down to find an enemy while they are so blind to why they are unsavory. Besides the lack of talent part, which they will never admit, all the resources at their disposal, and it's still someone else's nefarious actions. How long is their list of pharmaceuticals? When will he stop thinking that the whole world is targeting him? Basically just that he's always been a jerk. Can someone point out to Harry that Princess Anne was also threatened by the virtue of being in the line of succession to the throne? Anne actually was a victim in a kidnapping attempt back in the 1970s, where two of her bodyguards got shot. She hasn't spent the last 30 years bitching about needing more security, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't she only receive security when she's doing an official royal duty? And she also didn't bitch and complain that Charles got more sausage, and her kids didn't need titles. There was also an assassination attempt on Charles, at least one on the late queen. Another person broke into the queen's room while she slept. There's probably more that I'm forgetting. They all just got on with it, ironically. Charles didn't even flinch. Some terrorist org also threatened to bomb Prince George's school when he was like five years old. Like, I'm not even going to invalidate that it's scary for Harry to receive threats. I just find it tiring that he acts like he and his nuclear family are the only ones to ever have suffered from abuse or threats. A quick Google search will show that members of his extended family have suffered greater immediate threats to their lives, but Harry acts like those instances didn't happen or weren't valid threats or whatever. He just has this weird main character persecution complex where he's the only one that's suffered. He's the only one that's struggled. He's the only one to be persecuted. It's exhausting to hear about. Harry, look in the mirror. The person who downgraded your police protection is you and also, Megan. Remember, you are no longer working royals. Both of you call California, unfortunately, home. No need for protection, no one is looking for you. Deal with it. I honestly think that she thought the line of succession was something the royal family could ignore. That she and Harry could just leapfrog over William and Catherine and become the heir apparent because of their popularity. When it didn't happen, she was out there. Poor Harry when he thinks they're all against him. Fun fact, moving out of the UK has consequences, and this is one of them. He did it to himself, with a little help from the witch. If they had just stayed home since finding freedom, they'd be as safe as in the witness protection program. No one would recognize them. Harry with no hair, a beer gut, and a baseball hat, Megan without her hair extensions, straightening perm, fillers, and Botox. And they could both ditch those god-awful stacked bracelets. They'd fit in a trailer park. The people that decided to Megxit, leave the royal family, move to the U.S. and no longer be working royals, and do it all on their own with no help from the royal family, are the ones who made the decision. Wonder who that could be. That person's name is Harry when Harry quit his job and decided to follow his wife to Hollywood via Canada. 
he became responsible for providing his security. The person who signed off on the decision to change Harry's security arrangements in 2020 was not the person responsible for it. He wants the name for what reasons? So he can remove their right to privacy and harass them online or via the press? Put them at risk of physical harm by having his squaddies threaten them? What a hypocrite. He sets himself up as the dragon slayer when he's the greedy, bad-tempered dragon himself. Everyone is to blame except him and Megan. Everyone. Even the dead aren't off limits since he's blaming his grandparents for inconveniently dying at a bad time for him. Harry has to know his place. He decided to leave the royals. He decided to write about his supposed body count. He decided to stage a New York City high-speed car chase. He decided to travel to Jamaica after an advisory was put out. He puts himself out there. He now has to work and only makes money slandering his birth family, yet he still gets security when in the UK. Let him pay out of his own pocket for the level of security he believes he needs. Maybe he will now appreciate how much was done for his ungrateful butt all these years simply due to an accident of birth. They thought when they left via Megxit, it would be on their terms and no one would tell them no, because his wife was a very light-skinned black woman. Harry and Meghan are very limited in thinking, and now they see reality bites and karma as a bitch. Live your life, Harry and Meghan, with your no-talent brand and for only being famous for being former royals. How? Oh, yeah, like them apples. It is odd that a man-child who takes responsibility for nothing seeks accountability from others. What an aggressive bully he is. He just can't stand being told no. So if he had the name, would he and his wife set out to destroy their life? As they did with Piers, Morgan, and Clarkson. Anyway, with that arrogant attitude, he still felt worried about his security. But it's not like only he is afraid of that. Celebrities get racist and violent threats from social media trolls every day. Many of them have actually documented stalkers, crazies that break into their houses, far worse than Harry. If his criteria are only risk, then shouldn't all of these celebrities receive 24-hour government-paid security for life? Harry is so desperate for this stupid case that he must think it can be used as supporting evidence to request internationally protected person status. I wonder if he and Meghan won't be able to afford security soon. What will they do? Beg Charles for a handout? Do they live in one of the royal residences permanently? Harry is too dim to fully comprehend the decision-making procedures of Ravik to start with, per the blistering rebuke of the judge. I know it wasn't just one person who made this decision. It sounds like it was a committee consensus. However, if Harry could find just one person to blame for downgrading his protection, I'm sure he'd sue them. I want to talk to Harry. You're a commoner now, Harry. You can't demand anything. And even as a prince, your demands get you nowhere. It's like the lawyers representing Backrid smacked him down and it taught him nothing. Or more likely he is just used to getting over being humiliated rather quickly. Another sign he's arrogant. When he and Meghan used a train to visit Manchester in September 2022, he raised concerns because of his proximity to the public's. This reminded me of when he went to a soccer game and commoners wanted to get in the elevator, but his security said, Do you know who this is? They said yes and continued to enter. Poor Harry having to share an elevator with the public. He's such a petty, weak-minded little snot, a legend in his own mind only. He's a below-average bloke who would probably be ringing up groceries as his day job, but instead has been dining out on his mom and his family's name for 40 years. All the advantages in the world, yet this is where we are. Security is to Harry what private jets are to Meghan's status symbols. It's all they have. Neither of them have accomplished anything. Both are puffed up in the vanity of a title. When they do events, it's to draw attention to themselves, not the cause. Empty hollow shells rely upon outside sources to make them feel relevant. He doesn't know the name of the person behind the decision. 
If told the name, then what? He and Megan would have this person harassed, followed, and thrown in prison? I cannot fathom how self-important these idiots are and how delusional. He is so unbelievably arrogant and out of touch. He's now casting the whole British royal family in a bad light. I can't help but wonder if they're all like this, but have excellent PR as Harry used to, to cover up their entitled rude attitudes. He argued he had been singled out and treated unfairly when his automatic police protection was withdrawn following the Sandringham summit with the late Queen on January 2020, just before leaving the UK. Within hours of the judgment, a spokesman for Harry announced he would appeal it, adding that he was not asking for preferential treatment, but for a fair and lawful application he's so icky. Someone needs to tell Harry that he no longer has the power to order anyone around. In fact, his nasty wife is his boss now. Accept it, silly man-child. Is there anything he doesn't drag his mother's death into? I developed a brain tick where every time he does, I think shame you embraced her mistakes instead of learning from them. When I heard his statement, I thought it sounded as if he thinks as the king's son that he has the right to punish that person for deciding against him. He doesn't get vengeance. I believe it was Sir Francis Bacon in the 16th century who said revenge is a kind of wild justice. But the wild part isn't allowed any longer. The fact that he thinks the downgrade in security was ingling him out is absurd. So thick that he doesn't see that it was a direct consequence of stepping down. The so-called Sandringham Agreement was just that, an agreement. It set out the terms for both sides and gave Harry and Meghan a year to settle into their new lives in North America, which the late Queen actually believed to mean the continent and Canada. At the end of the year, they had to decide their future to stay in North America or return to Britain and their duties. There was no option of an extension of the trial separation, and no clause for future revocation of their decision. They chose to stay abroad so all the relevant purse strings were finally cut and his and her royal patronages were allocated to others. His clamoring and posturing are very much like that of his great uncle, who couldn't believe he was no longer welcome in Britain after he had agreed to live overseas in return for a generous stipend from his brother, one that suited Duke of Windsor's previous rank. Many of us have been wondering why Harry and Meghan still remain on the royal website. Could it have been decided to leave them there till this case was resolved? Given Her Majesty, the late Queen had offered to pay for his security. That would only happen if he was seen as a part of the active royals. Is it possible that with this ruling Harry and Meghan finally get removed from the site? Actually, that's just a small hope. I believe that King Charles and the palace will not do that. So Harry will still struggle in the headlines for a while, I believe that. Is he blowing his entire inheritance on lawsuits? Dude, give it up. You aren't really a prince anymore. You did the unthinkable and are running around naked trying to convince us you're clothed. I suspect his inheritance is long gone. He had thirty million dollars. That's chicken feed compared to the lifestyle he has. Housing expenses and security alone have to run at least $3 million a year. Then, add on cars, nannies, private schools, etc. If they are responsible for fueling the private jets, they borrow, that's a chunk of change. Doubt they go to Los Angeles and return in one day, which then involves hotel costs, etc. They aren't getting a lot of freebies in Los Angeles. Like New York, celebrities are a dime a dozen. Nickel and dime it together, and pretty soon their lifestyle must be running them $5, 6 million a year. They actually haven't got a lot of money from Netflix and Spotify. Her recent makeovers would cost a pretty penny, too. I suspect quite a bit has been paid out to keep former employees and others with dirt on these two quiet. She won't be grateful because his sacrifice hasn't yielded the results she wants, a huge fortune, a plus status, paid for international security, half and half out, royal jewels, public adoration, and William. My best guess is that Meghan will start her divorce proceedings, but not for a hasty divorce, but rather will drag it out for years to keep her name out there. I have also thought that, after the divorce, he may, you know what, 
he's going to lose everything, including the children, because of what he wrote in spare, and all the ammo she's been collecting on him all this time. Then the marriage that many people admire will also come to an end. Oh, you think I'm being sarcastic? No, just part of it. I actually used to support their wedding before they began to reveal their true nature, lies, cruelty, and greed. And what I hate about Megan is that she doesn't love or be proud of her skin color. She even used her ethnicity to become a victim of racism. It sounds a bit funny, but that's exactly what happened. But anyway, let's get back to Harry's objections to the court's ruling and his security obsession. He has an already large fees and costs bill he will owe to the government. His continued temper tantrums will do nothing but increase what he will ultimately owe. The government says that it will actively go after Harry for full remuneration on behalf of the British people. He also owes fees and costs in another case, a part of which he has already paid. Vexatious Harry is getting his very public due without even getting into his other takedowns. I love the 2023 years of reconciliation, since it turned into the year of retribution, and I love the 2024 years of continuing retribution. Karma making Harry and Meghan feel reality and real-world consequences has been such a joy to watch. Because they won't face reality, they are doomed to fail at everything they try. I'm just sitting here with my popcorn. This is a good point. Look at the unwanted media attention he rained down on his unsuspecting first. He doesn't care about press intrusion when he's the one instigating it. He wanted to keep his privacy. So why did he say private things related to William, even though I don't know if he was telling the truth? As galling as it was for Harry to reveal such private information about our Prince of Wales, yeah, it's ridiculous. The fuss over Archie not getting security... He was a baby. They still had security for themselves, and that extended to Archie for the next 18 years. In 18 years, though, he is too far down the line of succession to be important enough for security. Who knows, George could be married by the time Archie turns 18 and have the next heir. Archie and Lily were never going to need security as adults. If he, as a parent, were that concerned for his child's security, he'd have stayed on the job like how some people continue at jobs they don't like for health care or other benefits for their family's sake. And it wasn't as if it was a difficult job. Ah, but he had spouted all the crap about leaving jobs affecting his mental health. Again, tone deaf since most of us Megan don't really have that luxury. To be fair, he had way more to offer in a marriage than the ex-Soho, than D-list, talentless actress he married in haste way, way, way more. Except they blew everything he brought to the marriage up monumentally in their fully ado. This is all wife-driven. I believe she needles him constantly, bringing up comparisons with the Prince of Wales every day in some manner, stoking his paranoia any way she can such that he has no peace and can only temporarily escape with drug use, sending him further into the abyss. What a case study in Stockholm Syndrome. Meghan's fans claim that she is a self-made millionaire. Why can't Prince Harry's wife pay for her security? Why should someone else be responsible for their family? She spent it all on engraved gifts to herself. And paying for PR and puff pieces when she was an aging out Z-list actress lacking talent, renown, or achievement. So, he needs more free protection. Harry claims is more at risk than his mother. Racism thrown into his paranoid cauldron. He forgets his mommy had security but made poor decisions. It wasn't a lack of security that killed her, and she did not die in Britain. But as Harry admitted himself, reality isn't as important as whatever he imagines to be true. I understand the need to make money and sell content but his naked thirst for relevance by Harry simply exposes his stupid, arrogant grubbiness, narcissism, consummate right to lying, and greedy sense of entitlement that has no place in this day and age. This buffoon, who by some stroke of genetic soup premix ended up being, albeit part of the soup mix was questioned, birthed by marital infidelity ravaged Diana, 
thereby making him the follow-up to the actual heir to the throne. The Belland ingrate has always abused and decried the privileges he was birthed into, and publicly made a total arse of everything in, that he has utterly failed in all he has put his hand to, or truthfully put at all, that has been served his way, after. Harry has seen the result of casting off the cloak of protection of the royal family for the toxic dribble that Meghan squirted across the royal sheets and fed him pushing his delirium for world and royal dominance. Sadly, the end times are imminent as wisps of Meghan moving forward with the rebranding being all about her. Q lemonata and the squeezing of a putrid lemon in the likes of Meghan. The silly thing is he was treated as being special until he started his whining and then left. The press covered up a lot that they must have known about by agreement with the palace. It all started to go wrong when they wouldn't also cover up Meghan's bad behavior, such as bullying staff. Sucks to be you, Harry. Nobody cares about you. His sense of privilege gave him the entitlement to brag about killing 25 Taliban and then speaking of them as just pawns just like he feels about the general public. No veteran brags about killing. Harry has put a target on his own back, and his Montecito neighbors are ripe for the picking as well. That special, he is not special at all. All he has to do is to stay where he is and keep a low profile. At this point, he and his wife are gaslighting themselves all over the place. Throughout my life, I've had to run into those who just knew how better they were than me and never missed an opportunity to make certain I felt their disdain. Harry sickens me to my core. He will never learn what truly makes a human being great. I always told my son he was only special to his family, not to the rest of the world, so curb your attitude and ego. It's a hard lesson to learn, but too many kids today are raised like Harry was thinking the sun rises and sets on their asses. We as parents don't do them any favors if we spoil them. We're seeing here that Harry is finding out the hard way and it's embarrassing. And you? What do you think about Harry's ego? Let us know your answer by commenting. Don't forget to like and share the video so YouTube can suggest videos you might like. Please support us by subscribing to receive notifications when the latest videos are updated. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, and see you later.